Okay. So a continuation of Unit 2, we are now going to be looking at the different types of bonds and the different type of compounds. This is really the introduction to formula writing and chemical names that we are going to get to um, in a few minutes. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to look at the different types of compounds and classify properties of ionic and covalent compounds. So we're going to look at the different types of bonding. Now, in this semester, we only deal with covalent and ionic bonding. Um, in 112, we will also deal with um, metallic bonding. And actually, there was a article published January of 2015 with a new type of bonding that has been discovered. But we won't deal with that yet. Now molecules or ions are, excuse me, molecules or atoms that are bonded together that do not have a net charge. They are not going to be um, like the polyatomic ions that you're going to have to deal with in a little bit. Instead, um, they're going to be formed by covalent or ionic bonding to fill the octet and completely satisfy and balance the charge. Now, covalent bonds are formed by sharing electrons. Um, generally, every bond has one pair of electrons that's shared. So here we have fluorine that's got seven valence electrons, like this. It has space right here for another one. Another fluorine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, has a space here. If they form a bond, this guy's electron can fill his octet. This guy's electron can fill his octet and they tend to be very happy together. So that shared pair of electrons gives us a single bond. If you have a two pairs being shared, you have a double bond. Three pairs being shared, you have a triple bond. Now, in general, um, we talk about it in terms of sharing. Um, it just means that they both have ownership. We'll get to polar or unequal sharing later this semester. Now, covalent compounds um, for us are going to be between two nonmetals. That's that really small region of the periodic table. And some of them you've seen relatively often. CO2 is carbon dioxide. PCL3 is phosphorus trichloride. N2O3 is dinitrogen trioxide. We'll get to why those are named that way in just a minute, but just as an idea, all of these are two nonmetals. They make a binary covalent compound, binary meaning two. Ionic bonds are the electrostatic interaction that happen between a positively charged and a negatively charged ion. The electron from the metal transfers to the nonmetal leaving this guy with an octet from a previous row. This guy now has a new octet. Go away. There we go. Um, and they are both satisfied. Overall, this guy's lost an electron, so he has this positive charge. Fluorine has gained an electron, so he has a negative charge. He's an anion. And they will remain um, attracted to each other to stabilize themselves, basically. Ionic bonds are much stronger than covalent bonds, and because of that, they have higher melting and boiling points. Um, they're also going to be much more soluble in water and other polar substances because of those ionic interactions. Now, covalent compounds are between two nonmetals. Ionic compounds can be one of four types. You could have a metal from group one, two, or three and a nonmetal. You could have a transition metal and a nonmetal. You could have a polyatomic ion or you could have an acid. Now in a few minutes, well, or in the next video, we're going to be um, naming these compounds and learning it, looking at how you name them and how you write their formulas. But if you notice here, there's a pattern. 
For ionic compounds, you name the element name, the first element by its element name. The second element you name by the root of its element name, ending in ide. Sodium fluorine becomes fluoride, sodium fluoride. K2O, potass this is a group 1, 2, or 3 metal with a non-metal. So this is potassium, oxygen becomes oxide. Now because transition metals can have more than one charge, we're going to specify the charge with a Roman numeral. So this is iron 2 oxide, iron 3 oxide. When we get to formula writing in a second, I can, well, let's just do it now. Atom, number, charge, total. Here we've got iron and oxygen. There's one iron and one oxygen in each in of, of those. Oxygen is in group 6, which means it has a 2 minus charge. Because this compound is neutral, it doesn't have a charge, the total positives and the total negatives must add up to be 0. That gives us 1 times a minus 2, gives us an overall charge of minus 2. That means our overall positive charge must be a positive 2, giving us a charge on iron. 2 plus spread over one atom gives us plus 2. So it's iron 2 oxide. On the other hand, if we had iron two, Fe2O3, we have two irons, three oxygens. Oxygen is still in group 6, so it's going to have a minus 2 charge. We don't know the charge on iron because it's a transition metal, so we have to go through this table. We know all molecules are neutral. Not sure what that means. Um, because all molecules are neutral, this gives us an overall neg uh, negative charge of negative 6. To cancel it gives us plus 6. Plus 6 charge spread over 2 atoms is going to give us a 3 positive charge on this iron. So we name this as iron 3 plus oxide. If you have a polyatomic ion, you're going to just name the polyatomic ion by its name. So this is the carbonate ion, the potassium carbonate, ammonium oxide, hydrogen peroxide. Peroxide is a polyatomic ion. If it is an acid, it's going to start with an H, and we're going to have very specific naming for those, um, those compounds. If there's no oxygen, you have the prefix hydro, chloric acid. If you have polyatomic ions, it's either going to be an ic or an us acid. So sulfate becomes sulfuric acid, sulfite becomes sulfurous acid. Now guys, in a minute, I have three different places where I have these rules, including flow charts. It's a lot of information that's going to be coming at you, but we're going to handle it. I just wanted you to see the types of ionic compounds now before we get into the real naming. Now in your reading, there are, um, there's a table of polyatomic ions. That's great. But it, depending on what you are going to be dealing with, um, you may or may not need all of these. So what I would like to do is take, um, let me see if I can add in a slide. Discard. Um, there we go. I want to take a minute and look at how personally I would memorize um, the polyatomic ions and how I would recommend you do it. In addition, I'm going to show you specifically which ones we're going to use for this class, um, and that may be more helpful. Now, there is a pattern. Um, in fact, here I have it. When you have a series, um, it'll change by oxygen atoms. So for example, let's go ahead and change this to... 
IO3 minus is called iodate. If I change IO2 minus, charge is the same, only the number of oxygens is different. It is now iodite. Now, I could go down one additional and say IO negative. This is hypoiodite. And I could come up and say IO4 minus, same charge all the way across, but this is now per iodate. And this kind of makes sense because if you go, um, eight has more than eight, and if you eat or you have more, you have more when you've eaten, you have more when you ate, something like that. Um, in addition, um, if you go really low, you get high, like your body temperature, you get hypothermia. So we're going to keep the name, but add hypo to the prefix for the bottom. If we go up, just like you get hyperthermic, you can have per, and then the rest of the element name stays the same. Now, not every series has all four of these, but some do. But if you know the eight, I would take the time to memorize the eights. And if you know the trend, if I know iodate, I know iodite is one less oxygen. So I know if I know iodate is IO3 minus, IO2 minus must be iodite. All right, so let's look at the other, the, uh, some more. ClO3 minus, this was iodate, this is chlorate. IO4 minus, uh, ClO4 minus is perchlorate. ClO2 minus chlorite and ClO negative is hypochlorite. Oops. There we go. Now, these are the two that demonstrate that whole um, series that is on the next slide. Not everything has that. So for example, let's go ahead and change color because this is going to be crowded by the time we're done. NO3 minus is nitrate. NO2 minus is going to be nitrite. There's no other ones like that in this uh, trend. There's not a per nitrate. There's no hyponitrite. It is just these two. Now, for reasons that deal with oxidation number that we're not going to deal with right now because you're going to have enough rules to w worry about this unit, um, it doesn't always have uh, the same charge and the same number of oxygens. So for example, carbonate is CO3. 2 minus 8. There's really no other ones that we're going to deal with here. Sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. Oops, I don't even know how I did that. SO4, 2 minus. Sulfite is going to be SO3, 2 minus. But again, if you know sulfite, sulfate is SO4, 2 minus, you know that sulfite is going to just have one fewer oxygens. Now, if we do this, um, we still have phosphate, PO4, 3 minus is phosphate. Hopefully this is very familiar from your previous chemistry classes. Um, that's what I would hope. PO3, 3 minus is going to be your phosphite. Now, 
Now if you want, you can put every single one of these into a flashcard and memorize them. But I'm trying to give you ones that are um, the ones that we will use most of the semester. Now these are the ones that follow the trend on the next slide, but you also have some other ones. So for example, O2 with a 2 minus charge overall is peroxide. Um, there's two ways to write acetate. One is CH3COO minus. The other is you might see it as C2H3O2 minus. Either way, it is the acetate ion. Um, hydroxide is OH minus. Cyanide, we haven't done cyanide. Cyanide is CN minus. Hmm. There we go. Oh, and ammonium. The last one is ammonium. Let's see, I know there's got to be 10. NH4 positive is the ammonium ion. This is the only cation in the entire bunch, um, so it was just kind of cool. So if it were me, I would do flashcards for these and potentially um, the ones that are, I have boxed up here. But again, if you really like flashcards, you can do it for all of them. It's not a big deal. That kind of leads us into what we're going to do next, which is naming.